Good morning and welcome to the Forex Daily Update, brought to you by Pepperstone on Monday the 18th of March 2019. I'm Darren Sindon and you can follow me throughout the day on Twitter by using at DS underscore Pepperstone. OK, let's kick off with a look at the overnight changes and price moves to be aware of. And as ever, though, on a Monday, we'll look at things on a weekly basis. First of all, uh, I just want to flag uh, the weekly gains of sterling against the US dollar. Uh, the British pound adding 2.14% over the course of the last week to, to trade with a 132.90 handle. Shortly before we went live with the video, um, markets seem to think um, that uh, the that the ongoing deferment of, or potential deferment of Brexit uh, is beneficial to the UK currency. Don't forget that there's still uh, a real chance that the UK could leave the EU with a no deal uh, on the 29th of March. Elsewhere, uh, we saw gains in both the Australian and New Zealand currencies against their uh, US counterpart, the Aussie dollar adding 0.61% over uh, the course of the last week, the Kiwi adding 0.60% against the US currency. Uh, the Swiss franc has also uh, been on the move against the US dollar, but for its part, it's been losing ground, down by around 0.82% against the US dollar over the course of the last week. Uh, the rand had also lost ground, uh, a bit of to and fro really across uh, the course of uh, the last week as far as dollar rand was concerned. But uh, uh, the final summary, uh, the rand giving up 0.6% against the US currency, dollar index for its part trading down on the week and down by just over three quarters of 1% over the course of the last seven days. OK, then what's on the calendar? Events that may move the markets today. Relatively light calendar as far as high impact data is concerned. Uh, we've already had out uh, right move house price index data from the UK for the month of, Mar month of March, if I can say that. And uh, a final read on industrial production data out of Japan uh, for the month of January. And more on that figure later. To come at 10 a.m., we'll get a chance to have a look at balance of trade data for the Eurozone for the month of January. And that'll be followed at 11 a.m by the monthly Bundesbank report, a chance to see how the Bundesbank believes the German economy is faring and the state of Germany's finances. And then we pause until 12.30 when we cross over the Atlantic to Canada for uh, Canadian portfolio investment in foreign securities data for the month of Jan and foreign portfolio investment in Canadian securities for the same month. 1400, we hop over the border uh, to the USA proper and to uh, the NHAB housing market index data for March. At uh, half past four, 16.30 GMT this afternoon, there'll be three and six month bill auctions in the US. And then we pause until 20 hundred hours this evening uh, when we cross to New Zealand for the Westpac Consumer Survey uh, data for Q1. And at 2200, the day's sole central banker speech at this from RBA uh, member Kent. OK, then breaking news and comments caught my eye overnight and over the weekend. And first of all, China's foreign minister Wang Yi visits Brussels today uh, for talks ahead of um, a major EU-China summit next month. Very, very interesting to see uh, what uh, those preliminary discussions reveal. Key OPEC members, meanwhile, uh, and Russia will gather in Azerbaijan uh, to review their existing crude oil production caps that are aimed at keeping prices high. Uh, whether they can maintain those or whether they'll adjust them remains to be seen. Uh, Theresa May will make a last-ditch attempt to win over the Northern Irish Democratic Unionist Party, the DUP, and get them to support her Brexit plan. Of course, that plan has already been rejected twice by the UK Parliament. Meanwhile, Japan's industrial output fell by 3.4% in January. That was less than the preliminary data had suggested, but it was still the sharpest drop for more than a year in that figure, and it's uh, another uh, worrying data point for the Bank of Japan and Shinzo Abe. OK then, food for thought and something to take away with you into the trading day and beyond. Why not think about this? Uh, the Euro and the Eurozone are approaching uh, their effective 25th birthday and the single currency uh, surprisingly has not meant a level playing field as far as economic growth has been concerned. Clear winners and losers have emerged over the last two decades and this chart from Bloomberg uh, that shows the, the performance of uh, GDP for a number of uh, <coughs> Eurozone states uh, and the UK uh, clearly sets that out. Italy and Greece here at the bottom of the chart of the ones that have underperformed dramatically. Uh, you can see the Eurozone performance as an average in yellow. Germany and France in green and red respectively. Uh, Germany had been the clear leader but uh, it's France that's taking over uh, from Germany at the moment. But the winner 
um, in terms of economic growth, at least from the whole scenario, has been the uh, UK, which of course hasn't joined the euro uh, or the, uh, the single currency. Okay, it's risk warning time. Please do read this risk warning carefully because trading CFDs and foreign exchange on margin can be a risky business. If you're in any doubt about those risks or the suitability of leveraged products for you, then please do contact your Pepperstone account representative. As I say, do take the time to read this risk warning thoroughly, please. Thank you very much for your time today.